In this video, we're going to look at expanding brackets. So expanding brackets involves multiplying all terms inside a bracket by all of the terms that are outside of that bracket. Once a set of brackets have been expanded, there will no longer be any brackets present in the expression that you were dealing with, although they still will be equivalent. Most of the time we will use grids to help us expand brackets. And we use grids because they are a great way of setting up all of the multiplication that needs to happen when you're expanding brackets. And it's also a great way to minimize mistakes that you could make while you're expanding. So next we'll look at a series of examples. And I'd encourage you to have a pause of the video in between each question so that you can have a go at the next one before I complete it for you. So for the first example, A, we're going to expand 2x through the bracket x plus 5. And I've just coloured those terms as being blue and green so you can see how we go about setting up the grid. So next we'll draw a grid and we need to have enough spaces to put all of the terms that we have. So you can see that this grid has one row and two columns and that means I can put 2x here and x plus 5 up the top and you'll see that I've included the sign on the 5 which will be important in particular when we get to negative numbers. So now our job is simply to multiply 2x by x and that will give us 2x squared and then we multiply 2x by positive 5 which gives positive 10x. So therefore this is simply equal to 2x squared plus 10x and that is the final answer for part A. So you might want to pause the video now and have a go at part B before I complete it. So if we do do part B, we're going to have minus 5x as one of the terms, and that needs to be multiplied through this bracket, which is 3 take 2x. So next we're going to need to set up another grid that will hold this expansion in it. And in this position we're going to put minus 5x, and we can see the negative sign is still written there, which is very important. And up the top we can write this is 3 minus 2x. And now we simply multiply the terms up the top of the column and to the side of the row together. So we have minus 5x times 3 is minus 15x. And then we have minus 5x times minus 2x, which is plus 10x squared. So that means that this expansion is equal to 10x squared minus 15x. And that is the answer to part B. So the thing to watch out for here is that it is very easy to make a mistake when negative signs are present. And that's why using a grid can be so helpful, as long as you remember to bring the negative signs down with each term when you write it in your grid. Next we're going to look at expanding when there's two brackets present. So for part C we have x plus 3 multiplied by the bracket x plus 6. So we need to multiply this x plus 3 by all of the terms in the second bracket, which is the x plus 6. So now when we're setting up our grid, we need to have enough space to put two terms on each side. So this will be big enough now to hold the expansion we need to do. So this will be x and plus 3 and this will be x and plus 6. And now when we multiply this through, we have x times x is x squared in this position. And then this is plus 6 times x, which is plus 6x. And then x times plus 3 is plus 3x. And positive 3 times positive 6 is positive 18. So now we need to simplify by collecting like terms. And we can see that plus 3x and plus 6x are like terms. So the answer is going to be x squared plus, and this will simplify to 9x plus 18, and that will be the answer to part C. For part D, we have 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 4, and we're going to need to deal with this 3 in a moment, so I'll just leave that red arrow there as a reminder. But the first thing we're going to do is expand x plus 2 by the x minus 4 bracket. So setting up our grid, we need another quite large grid. And this will be x plus 2. And this will be x take 4. And now when we multiply this through, we get x times x is x squared. Minus 4 times x is negative 4x. Then we have x by positive 2 gives plus 2x. And then positive 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So collecting up like terms, we have plus 2x and minus 4x are like terms. 
So this is simply equal to x squared, and then minus 4x plus 2x is minus 2x minus 8. However, that 3 still needs to be multiplied by all of those terms now. So we have 3 times that expansion of the two brackets. And rather than setting up another grid, I'm just going to use a series of arrows to keep track of this. So we're going to multiply 3 by all 3 of these terms. And that will equal 3x squared minus 6x minus 24. And that is going to be the answer to part D of this question. So the thing to watch out for this time is to remember to simplify your answer by collecting any like terms. And that's what we did in the highlighting in these two examples. For part E, we have a slightly different take on expansion, and that's when we have things like x plus 5 all squared. And what that's actually equal to is when you have something squared, you just multiply it by itself. So this is going to actually be two brackets next to each other, and in the first one we can write x plus 5, and then because squaring is multiplying by itself, the second bracket will also have x plus 5. So next up we can set up a grid to expand this. So it needs to be quite a large one to fit all of these terms in it. Down here we're going to have x plus 5. And across the top we're going to have x plus 5. And now multiplying out as we have in all the other ones, we'll give x squared plus 5x plus 5x and plus 25. So the answer to this is going to be x squared plus and 5x plus 5x is 10x and then still plus 25. So that's the answer to part E of this question. Now the really, really important thing to watch out for here is that a very common error is to give x plus 5 squared equals x squared plus 25 and miss this middle term. So that is an error that's incorrect and you can see that by using a grid you can probably avoid that in the future. We're going to do the same thing for part F, remembering that if something's squared it's just multiplied by itself. So we can set this up as 2x take 7, and in the second bracket we're also going to have 2x take 7. And now we set up our grid so that we can expand this. So here we'll have 2x minus 7, and here we'll also have 2x minus 7 across the top. And multiplying that out we get 2x times 2x is 4x squared, minus 7 times 2x gives minus 14x, 2x times negative 7 gives minus 14x, and negative 7 times negative 7 will give positive 49. So again, just be careful with negatives when you're expanding. So simplifying that and collecting like terms, we'll get 4x squared, and then the two lots of negative 14x will turn into negative 28x, and of course we'll still have the plus 49 there. So that will be the answer to part F of this question. Now although we've seen expansion with two brackets present before, this is a special case where we expand and we have x plus 6 and x minus 6. And we're going to generalise that further in a little bit. But for now I'm going to say that the x plus 6 is going to be in blue and the x takes 6 in green. And now we're going to put that into a grid to expand it. So this will be x and plus 6. And this will be x and subtract 6. And now we're going to expand this, so we'd get x times x is x squared, negative 6 times x is negative 6x, x times positive 6 is positive 6x, and negative 6 times 6 is negative 36. And now when we simplify by collecting our like terms, we can see that positive 6x would cancel with negative 6x, which means that when we expand this, we simply get x squared take 36. So that is the final answer to part G. And what we find out is that this and the next example are both called a difference of perfect squares, or DOPS for short. And more generally, DOPS is when we can recognise the following. We have A take B multiplied by A plus B. And the expansion when the middle term cancels, which it always will when it's in this form, is just going to be A squared take B squared. So that's what we're going to call DOPS in the future. So moving on to our second example, we have 2x plus root 11 is going to be multiplied out by 2x minus root 11. And next we're going to set up our grid to expand this. And now in all of the other examples, I've always written 2x plus root 11, the first bracket, along the side. 
but it really doesn't matter if I put it up the top. So this could be 2x plus root 11, which just means down the side we're going to have 2x minus the square root of 11. And now when we expand this out, we have 2x times 2x gives 4x squared. And then 2x times positive square root 11, well that's a bit tricky, but it's actually just plus 2 root 11 x. So we just multiply those two terms together. And the same thing happens here, we have 2x times negative root 11, and this is just going to give negative 2 root 11 x. And then we have the square root of 11 times negative square root 11, which is just equal to negative 11. If we just unpack this one a little bit more, we had negative square root of 11 times positive square root of 11. And that just equals negative root 11 times root 11 gives 121, which is equal to negative 11. So that's the long way of obtaining that value. The shorter way is just to know that when we have the square root of 11 times the square root of 11, it simply returns 11. So as with that dots pattern, we can see that plus 2 root 11x and minus 2 root 11x cancel, and that's what we expect to happen when we have a dots, giving the final answer is simply equal to 4x squared minus 11. So that's the answer to part H. And now we'll do one final example together before we finish up this video. And that's when we have three terms inside two lots of brackets. So this just becomes a little bit bigger of a problem, but we can deal with it using a grid. So the first three terms, if I put them in blue, is going to be x plus 2 minus root 5. And in green, we have x plus 2 plus root 5. So a nice big grid is definitely needed this time. And now along the side, we'll have x plus 2 minus the square root of 5. And along the top, I'm going to have x plus 2 plus the square root of 5. And as we were doing with 2 by 2 grids, we simply multiply. And we have x times x gives x squared. This will be plus 2x, and this will be plus root 5x. Going along the next row, we're going to have 2x here, and that's positive still. And then we have plus 4, and then we have plus 2 root 5. And then going along the bottom, we have x times negative root 5 gives negative root 5x. 2 times negative root 5 is negative 2 root 5. And then positive root 5 times negative root 5 just gives negative 5. Now we can see a few things here will cancel. So we have negative root 5x here and positive root 5x there, so they will cancel. And we'll also have negative 2 root 5 and positive 2 root 5 will cancel. Left behind we have a few like terms. We have plus 2x and plus 2x here that will combine. And we also have 4 and negative 5 here which will combine. So overall this expansion is going to equal x squared plus 4x minus 1. So that is the answer to part G. So after this video you should be able to understand that expanding brackets requires multiplication of all terms in one bracket by all terms in any other brackets present. You should be able to expand a variety of simple and more complex expressions like the ones that were shown in this video. And you should be able to avoid common errors and mistakes by using grids to help when you're expanding brackets.